Hi, everyone. Uh, it's okay. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to, to this week's Bite Size Talk. I'm very happy to today with us is Jonathan from Sequera, and he is going to talk about the NFCore pipeline differential abundance. And off to you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, yep, yeah, so um, I'm going to just spend a, a, a quick few minutes talking about differential abundance, uh, which is maintained by by myself and and by uh, Oscar Wacker. Um, so before I kick off, I just wanted to clarify some terms. Um, by abundance here, we're talking about the, the magnitude of matrix values. I'm aware that abundance is a bit overloaded in some communities, but here it's just a term we wanted to use to be, to be more generic than, than, than expression. Um, when I talk about features, I'm talking about the individual variables and measurements of, of, a, of a matrix, which is in, in the expression space, I'm talking about genes or, or transcripts. Um, and by observation, we're talking about the individual um, samples or experimental units. Um, and by covariates, we're talking about a variable that possibly predicts the outcome under study, um, um, but might be, uh, um, but it's not of the primary interest. Um, so, for example, batch is, is one that comes up quite often in, in expression data. Um, and just to kind of reinforce that, if you're used to dealing with expression data in the R world, you, you might be used to this sort of structure where you have uh, a central assays concept where the matrices are stored. You have features, which is where the metadata associated with genes and, and transcripts are stored. Um, and you have um, samples, which is where the, the observations are stored. Um, and in, in kind of the core world, we, that's a sort of a sample sheet, basically, the, the observations uh, metadata there. Um, Another important con concept for differential analysis is the concept of contrasts. So um, in the top part of this slide, we have a, a sample sheet. I've highlighted the condition column here. And in order to, to define a contrast, we might use that condition column and say that we want to compare the samples that have control in that column and the samples that have treatment in that column. Um, and to extend this very slightly, we have this um, concept of blocking in, in the sample sheet, in the contrast variables we use here, which is used to incorporate um, the sort of batch covariates into the differential expression modeling. And we'll get to that a bit more, a bit more later. So the objective of this workflow was really to act as a unified point of access for differential analysis of matrices um, with diverse data types of which RNA-seq is, is, is um, the most widely used, but we, we also have um, expression arrays and there's a proteomics pathway through there as well. Um, but basically we want to share common components in these sorts of analyses across data types. So where we have matrix filtering, we have graphical representations like volcano plots, and these can all be shared across different different data types. And then we have some some high quality reporting at the end that we that we want to use to make all this all this pretty. Um, so and so yes, we do have this kind of similar approach across data types. So you have a process that gets data, you have some exploratory analysis going on, you have to filter the matrices in some way, often removing zero row, all zero rows. And we want to compare um, compare groups um, and produce a report at, a, a report at the end, and that's common across all, across all these data types. Um, so the current status of the workflow um, looks something something like this. If I could get you to concentrate just on this on this middle row here, we have four key inputs to the workflow. We have feature annotations, we have the abundance values, we have the observation annotations, so the sample sheet I just mentioned, and we have the contrast definitions. And these all four get combined. We we validate them to make sure these things are consistent among each other. Uh, we filter the matrices to to do this sort of zero filtering and so on that I mentioned. And then there's a multiple different or currently two different differential analysis methods uh, used depending on the input data type. And then we proceed to optional gene set enrichments and exploratory analyses, differential analyses, and the the final kind of reporting steps. Um, I also want to highlight the this top left corner of the, of the um, tube map here. Um, this is just uh, the different input methods that we have that can be used to generate these 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 primary inputs, basically. So, for example, we have a uh, an input method uh, using uh, the getGeo module, which uses a geo identifier to pull a matrix from from geo. Um, and we have a, a pathway by which you can specify affymetrix array intensities, and they again get converted into a matrix, um, which can be used in the downstream analysis. So these these are just kind of different entry points into the into the workflow. To generate these common inputs, uh, the generate usage looks like much like a lot of other um, NFCore workflows. We have an input sample sheet here. 
uh, we, we have a matrix, which is the uh, dependence values and the GTF file, so the, the uh, um, genome annotations, and then the contrast definitions that I, I mentioned before. Obviously, we have a, a load of other parameters, but these are kind of the key the key key inputs that you that you have, and then this will will work in a minimal sense. Um, to, to dwell a little bit more on the RNA seq case, um, RNA the, the end of core RNA seq module outputs um, uh, its its matrices from us, using the TX import R package or TXI meta import uh, package, um, and that is useful for accounting for the biases in length. Of transcripts across samples, so it's very important to adjust for cases where the dif differential um, isoform usage across treatment groups can lead to differences difference in length. So, if treatment group A um, uses primarily a very short isoform and treatment group B uses primarily a very long isoform, that can introduce statistical biases in terms of counts, which we need to adjust for. Um, and the best way of doing that right now is to take the raw counts that come out of of um, the RNA-seq workflow, this um, salmon merge gene counts or TSV, and also pass into the differential abundance workflow, the transcript length matrix, and that allows that modeling to occur. Um, we only added that fairly recently into the RNA-seq workflow, so as a second best for older versions of RNA-seq, you can just use the, the length scaled counts that come out of that workflow. Um, there is now a, um, a proteomics pathway through the, through the, uh, through the workflow uh, built by, uh, by Oscar, um, and that allows you to take data produced by MaxQuant, um, use the Proteus package to convert that table into an abundance matrix and normalize that matrix, and then pass that matrix into all the downstream um, differential analysis and reporting that I've, that I've just quickly mentioned. Um, before any matrix gets to go further through the workflow, we have to do this, this validation. So just to, to emphasize that a bit more, we have to check that the feature um, annotations that we provided are compatible with the rows of the matrix, that the um, sample annotations are compatible with the columns of the matrix, and that the, um, the variables that we've used in defining our contrast are actually present in the sample sheet, for example. So all that thing, all that happens before, before anything else goes, goes through the workflow. Um, then kind of the first real sort of analysis step is to do some, do some filtering. Um, the default is just to remove all rows with all zeros. Um, but there are more, more slightly more advanced options available. So you can specify a different threshold rather than zero. You can specify a number of samples that must pass that threshold, or you can specify a proportion of samples that must pass that threshold. And that's often quite useful in RNA-seq data where you want to, if you have 100 samples, for example, or, and, and you want to, to say, you know that your smallest treatment group size is, 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 is 10, you can say that um, you want at least 10 samples to pass the threshold because that would be a quick amount to one of your treatment groups passing the passing threshold. You could do things along those lines. Um, for differential analysis, we have DSeq, which is currently used for RNA-seq and um, other undefined input types. And we have Lima, which is used for the Appymetrics array data and, um, and the proteomics data. Um, but both of these modules have a consistent interface. They, they accept contrast in the same manner. Um, and they model covariates uh, in the same manner. And we might anticipate that as other data modalities get added to the workflow in the future that we had other specialist differential modules. Um, just a, a note on batch handling, um, it's bad form in this sort of analysis to do an actual batch correction prior to differential analysis. Um, instead, we model batches of covariate as part of the differential analysis using models that look a bit like this in, in, in DC or, or in NIMA. Um, but it would be nice to have an actual um, batch correction in place to to help with exploratory analysis. So, for example, when you're doing PCA, to remove the effects of that batch in in doing that PCA, we don't currently have that, but we but we do plan on on doing that at some point in the future. Um, downstream of the differential stuff, we have um, G set enrichment analysis. Um, we've had the GSEA tool in, in here for a while. That's just the wrapper around the broad the broad GSE GSEA tool, um, and that's not based on thresholding of of genes. It's based on um, um, sorry, that's not based on threshold, it's just based on ranked, ranked gene lists um, in the data. So that, that's, that's, that's a good way to go. Um, but also uh, Oscar has also incorporated this G-Profile 2 method into the pipeline recently. It's in an unreleased, it's unreleased, so it's not in a released version of the workflow right now. Um, but that is based on thresholds. So it's, it takes um, um, gene sets and compares them against the background. 
Um, one of the reporting outputs of the workflow is is a HTML report derived from an R Markdown file. Um, importantly, the, we, we importantly we also provide the um, the R Markdown file itself with all the parameters resolved um, at the end of the workflow, and that allows someone to take that Markdown file and the results files that are bundled with it and and customize it to do their own type of analysis or to tweak the plots or so on, which can be quite a, quite a powerful thing to be able to to do. Um, because we obviously we can't anticipate all the things that people might want to do in their reporting. Um, another thing option that we have is the shiny NGS package. I built that in uh, about 2016, many years ago. Um, and that is a, an R package which builds shiny applications based on standard inputs. So you give it a set of matrices and some p-value tables and um, gene set analyses if you have them in the right format. Um, and that will automatically build um an R, uh, a shiny data mining tool um and that allows you to to modify thresholds used to select gene lists and 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 um produce plots from subsets of the of the genes and, and so on which is which is quite nice and the workflow if you if you configure it correctly it will actually push an application directly to to um shinyapps.io which is a kind of platform as a service offering by the r studio people that will actually so you can have the workflow produce those things automatically as a result of analysis, which is which is really um, can be quite nice. I should say that I haven't shiny and yet is, is is an independent product and it's quite powerful. I haven't wired every feature of it into the workflow yet. So the, the things you get from the NF core differential abundance workflow, not all of that connects into shiny NGS yet. But the, but it is um, to a large extent there, and you can do some quite powerful data mining with it. Um, and you get you get plots like this. So um, this is a volcano plot. Um, uh, which if, if if I were showing you it live, uh, you'd be able to mouse over these points and find out what genes these are, and you can adjust these thresholds to um, to move these boundaries around in the plot, for example, to to show different sets of sets of genes. And you can change the color palettes and point sizes and do all that that cool stuff as well. And that's powered by plot, Plotly, um, and you can export those plots um, from this from this interface. So to do, um, we do need to optimize the workflow for larger sample numbers. It's currently doesn't the current doesn't doesn't perform very well once you get above uh, tens of samples. Um, we need to fix that so that there's adaptive reporting, so we don't try and um, use some of the plots we have right now for very large sample numbers. Um, we need to cut down the report size somehow. Um, I think probably some of the HTML can be reduced by rounding some 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 of the values. Um, I'd like to add some sparse matrix handling. Uh, we have. Some more gene set methods that people have asked us to add. Um, I want to modify the way that we use GCA, or at least have an option to do so, so that we use the ranks derived from parametric fold changes from DC and so on. Um, and I want to improve the the um, shiny NGS integration of gene sets, which is not currently currently wired in. Um, I would like to add the batch correction, as I as I mentioned. Um, and uh, Suzanne Jin of CRG is also working on an alternative pathway to this workflow using log ratio analysis. Um, and hopefully that will be available sometime later this year. Uh, just to give credits, I built the initial workflow structure and some of the differential modules. Oscar has since done a lot of work on adding a number of improvements, especially in the reporting stages and that proteomic stuff I mentioned. Azadine was a former colleague of mine at Helix, um, and he built the, the geo query functionality. And also, it's always necessary to thank the awesome NF Core community members for all their bug fixes, PR reviews, and, and for implementing all the cool standards. Um, I should acknowledge my former employer, Helix, who, who funded me during the first phases of the development of this workflow. Um, and that was also Azadine's employer he was, as he was doing that work. Uh, I'm currently employed by Sakera, uh, who are a, a great company with great providing great community support. And we should credit Oscar's employer, Cubic, at the University of Tübingen. Um, OK, that's me at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That's really interesting. I love the shiny app, really. Um, so uh, everyone from the audience is now able to unmute themselves and uh, to ask any questions. Uh, maybe I start with the one that is already in the chat. So it is asking uh, if SVA is used for batch correction, for example. So that's one of the things we could do. Yes, that's... Um... Yes, so to add that to add that batch correction for use in exploratory analysis, yeah, that could be SVA, it could be Combat, any of the sort of commodity um, batch correction tools. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I also have a question. So, how many ways do these comparison go? Is it just like a, a paired comparison, like with two uh, sets, or can you have more than two sets? 
you can have any a number of so it's, it's only pairwise comparisons but you can have as many pairwise comparisons as you want um okay. in the start, so as long as you put them in the contrast file you can you can compare in a number of different ways people have asked for time series analysis that's not currently possible in the workflow um so with the kind of uh, likelihood, ratio, likelihood ratio tests and so on mm -hmm. and we haven't come, currently implemented anything like that okay thank you are there any more questions from the audience ah uh Victor is asking uh, if he if it doesn't support those responses. Could you could you maybe expand a bit on that, Victor? Uh, well, if you have a dose response uh, statistical testing, for instance, so if you have clear. ten you different like, doses, so you mean like a continuous? Covariate effectively. Like it can... Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, it's just it's just discrete contrast right now. Yeah. Thank you. Um, are there any more questions from the audience? 